The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. Fear not, God is with you. This is one of my favorite passages from scripture because it just it really encourages me. And today I hope it encourages you as we talk about fear and discouragement. The word of God says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, many times we get discouraged or we get afraid. Fear steps in and fear can grip people and actually cause them to completely shut down. Fear is a very powerful tool the enemy uses against us and uses to distract us from God and from our calling and from our purposes. And today I wanted to share with you a little bit about that and always to remember that we don't have to fear. You know, God never says we can't be afraid because there are things that make us afraid. There are things that scare us in life. There are things that make us feel discouraged. But just because we feel afraid at a moment or we, we have something that causes fear that comes up in our life or we have a moment of feeling discouraged doesn't mean we have to live in discouragement and doesn't mean we have to live in fear. Don't allow the idea of being afraid cause you to live in fear because God says in his word, fear not for I am with you. And that's such a comforting thing for me as I went through my life, I always you know, felt different fears or different anxieties or different worries. And sometimes I would allow them to grip me and to hold me back from what God had for me. And oftentimes the the sense of, of unworthiness and the sense of anxiousness would come from those times. You know, for many of us, we feel if we grew up in a Christian home or in the church, we can feel like when we blew it or we didn't really walk with the Lord faithfully and we knew we should, that, you know, God was mad at us, that God was angry with us, that God was discouraged with us. I know many times in my life, I felt that, you know, God must just be kind of frustrated with me. Maybe he's just done with me because so many times I've committed my heart, I've committed my life. I've said, yes, Jesus, I will follow you and made that commitment and made it from my heart and I meant it. But then situations in life, things would come up and I would fall back into that trap of not walking with God, of allowing something to grip me with fear, something to cause anxiety, something to cause discouragement. Instead of letting God help me with that fear so it would go away and God could cast it out of my life. Instead of dealing with that discouragement and feeling discouraged before I got discouraged and then lived in discouragement. You know, many of you today, you might be discouraged and you know what, feeling discouraged is not wrong, but don't let discouragement take over. 
where your life is a discouragement and you just give up. If you feel afraid one day, that's okay. We all have things that, that scare us and that make us afraid. Afraid of losing someone, afraid of losing something. But don't let it make you live in fear because that's what the enemy wants to do is rob us. Rob of, of the freedom that Jesus wants us to walk in because perfect love, God, perfect love does cast out all fear. You know, as I grew up, I had a mom and a dad, Fred and Willie Jordan, that, you know, they, they served Jesus their whole life and they had great testimonies. And, you know, they never really walked away from God. And they always seemed to do it right. They weren't perfect people, but to me and to most, they lived a pretty perfect, righteous, holy life. And so I always felt like there was something to live up to. I always felt like, okay, if the standard is my parents or the standard is Jesus of perfection, I'm gonna fall short of that every single time. There is no way I'm going to be able to live up to that. And so there were many times in my life where I would want to walk with Jesus, I would commit to Jesus, but then something would derail me. And every time I wanted to come back and, and, and make it right with the Lord and, and serve Jesus and quit doing my own thing, not fall away, but to really walk with Jesus, I found myself in a situation where I, I, I just felt like I blew it too many times. I'd messed up too many times. And I didn't remember all those scriptures and passages that I don't have to live in fear, that I don't have to live in condemnation, and that I don't have to live under that guilt and that anxiety. You know, it can really grip you. I remember going to Bible college and then after Bible college, I messed up, you know, I, I partied some with my friends and I did things that, that I shouldn't be doing as one who was loving and serving Jesus and had gone to Bible college. And yet here I found myself just discouraged and walking in discouragement. And then I was walking in defeat. I felt like I'd let God down too many times. I felt like I'd let my parents down too many times. And it was that guilt and that shame and that defeat that caused me to walk in a fear of God that wasn't healthy at all. Instead of saying, God, I need you. I need you to take away this fear. I need you to take away and cast this fear and anxiety and worry away so I can walk with you in, in righteousness and holiness that, that you give me. I lived in the guilt that I was just rotten and bad and I blew it one too many times. You know, as I got into ministry more and I started serving Jesus by sharing the gospel, sharing the word like I am today with you and encouraging others to walk with Jesus. I found myself second guessing myself. I found myself often wondering, well, am I good enough to do this? Am I, am I right enough with God to do this? Do I really know enough of the Bible? Is this really something that, that God wants me to do, or is this something that someone else wants me to do? But you know, I realized the more I sought God, the more I realized God had called me to share His love. God had called me to preach His word. God had called me to encourage others. And my life and all I went through could be used by God to help someone else. But make no mistake, we all go through fear and worry, anxiety and being afraid at times. But we don't have to live in that. We don't have to accept that and we don't have to be bound by that. Stay with me and I'll share the rest of this message in just a minute. Today as we look all around, no matter where we are in life, more than ever we see needs great needs, hopeless, hurting, desperate people. And what we would typically see on the streets of Skid Row, we are now seeing in every city, every community, and in every neighborhood. Hunger is no respecter of persons. Willie Jordan says, 
hunger never takes a day off. For those of you during this unprecedented time of history who are doing good, then we ask that you would generously give to those who are not as fortunate. So many from all walks of life are hurting. Will you extend a hand of mercy to help them in their greatest time of need? Your most generous gift is needed. Go online to give fjm.org. Whatever the amount, great or small, your donation is greatly appreciated. Hey, I'm here with Eddie Algera. We're so excited to have you. I'm excited because why? Because one, you're my friend. Uh, you're my yeah. brother yep. in Jesus. Yeah. And, and I love you so much. And I've sat under your teaching. You're a pastor and, um, and you're a friend and you're a mentor. And, but also I'm excited because your previous life, yes. which you still do yeah. on, on a certain level, but your previous professional life before Jesus, yeah was a skateboarder. A skateboarder. Yeah. Uh, early pioneer. Early pioneer. Yeah. So like early 80s, late 70s? Uh, late 70s was when I kind of became pro, but I was probably from 1970, 71 is when I started wow. with the small boards, clay wheels. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's come a long way since, yeah, yeah, huh? Yeah. You know, when people are watching and stuff, they hear the name Tony, yeah. right? Who do they think of? Tony Hawk, when they Tony, say Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty famous yeah. guy, right? Yeah. You know what's amazing about the whole thing is I just remember hearing these things and I remember talking to you and I've heard so many others that talk about you. But as far as skateboarding, you were one that he looked up to. Yeah. You were like a mentor. You were one who he wanted to be like. Yeah, yeah. So as a pioneer, you were a two-time world champion, yeah, right? Yeah. You were the top of the game, top, top of the, of the game, world. Yeah. But at that time, you didn't have Jesus, did you? No, no, I didn't. And that's, I think that's, that's the thing that I strived after my second title. Right. Uh, I invented tricks, traveling the world, um, you know, winning contests, getting money. I was, you know, 17 right. years old, 16, 17 years right. old. But then I just kind of realized that there was that emptiness. And right. I, I stopped. Right. I, I, after I won the second title, I stopped skateboarding. And everybody in the industry is like, why are you stopping? You know, go for a third, go for another one. But it was kind of like, you know, how many contests do I have to win to feel good? Or how many, how much more money do I have to get? Or how many tricks do I have to, how, how long do I have to be on the top to make me feel good? Right. And it's just like, I was always striving for something, but never attaining that happiness. Because there's that void, there's that emptiness that we all have. I mean, our viewers have it. Yeah. How do they, how do they find Jesus? And how do they find that eternal hope that only Jesus can bring? Yeah. Well, you know, it's like for me, when I was at the top, had everything going for me, that's what I thought success was. And that's what I thought fulfillment in life was. But the more that I tried to strive for it, the more contests I won, I realized that that wasn't gonna fulfill me. And then I started doing drugs, and then I started partying, and then I started trying to find fulfillment in other things. And my thing is, is I realized that, you know what? I had to give my life to Jesus Christ because when I heard about Jesus Christ, that his love for me, that, that he came to this world, that I might have eternal life, not to condemn me. And I think that's a, a lot of times people think that God is in heaven that wants to bang them over the head right. and just tell them how bad they are. But he yeah. just wants to love on them. He knows, he knows where we're at. He knows what we've done. He knows what we did yesterday, today and tomorrow, right. but he still loves us. And that's the thing is I, I realized, you know what, that's the true meaning of life. Yeah. I think that one of the scriptures in the Bible says that uh, this is eternal life because a lot of people, what is eternal life? Right. And people say, well, when I get to heaven or when I'm born again, but, but, and that's, that's all true, but eternal life is, is the verse of the Bible says, this is eternal life that they may know you, that they may know him. Yeah. And just to have the eternal life here on the earth, even before we get to heaven, how amazing is that? Absolutely. Another question, why do you do outreach? Why do you feed the poor and the needy? And why are you a part of, of distributing things? You know, we love to declare Jesus yeah. loves you but also Jesus demonstrated God's love for people by healing them, feeding them, giving them something to drink if they were thirsty. Yeah. So why do you do it? We have a saying in our church that we love people to life. Right. And because Jesus loved me to life. Right. And I think this displays and shows the love of God yeah. that we're giving, not asking anything in return, but just right. saying, hey, I want you 
love on you, yeah. give you, bless you. Absolutely. What do we have to do? What do I have to give? No, nothing. That, 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 that's what God did for us. And Jesus loved us the light. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. And of course, one of our mottos is hope served here. Yeah. Because Jesus is yeah. the hope of the world. Yeah. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Join the conversation by connecting with us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. Visit us at social.fjm.org. Fear, it's a really strange thing, as I've learned throughout all of my life. You know, we all deal with it on some level or another. Sometimes it can grip us and it can control us, and sometimes it can motivate us to take action and make change in our life. But some get paralyzed, and some have embraced it so much to the point that, that they're stopped in their tracks from really living out the life God's called them to. I was sharing just a few minutes ago with you how fear and worry and anxiety has in my life at many times caused me to question, question whether I was good enough, question whether I was right enough, question if I was, uh, you know, educated enough in God's word and, and, and in his ways to really share that with others. And what I've realized through all of this is, you know, I, I, I don't have to live up to being Fred Jordan because I'm not Fred Jordan. And, and I always thought growing up, you know, if you're gonna preach the word, you have to be Billy Graham. You have to be as good as he was. You don't have to because God made one Billy Graham. I'm grateful for that. But God made Joe, God made you, whatever your name is, Bob, Mary, Maria, Cynthia, it doesn't matter. Whatever your name is, just know this, God made you. God made Joe and he made me who I am. And he made me in his likeness, in his image, just like he made you. Like he made my father, like he made Billy Graham. But I don't have to live up to being them because I'm not them. My calling, my responsibility to God is to give him all of my life, my heart, my soul, my strength, and let him use the gifts and abilities and talents that he's given me for his glory. You know, I'm, I'm honored and I'm privileged to be on the roof here at the Fred Jordan Mission in downtown Los Angeles with LA behind me, that great skyline, and share with you from God's word, encourage you from God's word and from what God's done in my life. But I also have realized and accepted that it may not be the same way my father, Fred Jordan, or my mom, Willie Jordan, would do it. It's the way I do it because it's who I am. And that has to be okay, and that has to be enough. But for a long time, I questioned that. I questioned whether it was enough. But God made it very clear to me in my heart as I continued to just cast my cares upon Him, share my heart with Him, that He let me know, Joe, I made you who I made you. Just do what I have called you to do and I'll equip you and empower you to do it. And I may never be the greatest speaker, the greatest preacher, and I'm okay with that, but I'm gonna share my heart. And I'm gonna share the passion that I have for Jesus and with others that live on the streets of Skid Row, that live in the Coachella Valley, and that are lost and hurting wherever I see them in this world. And I'm gonna share every bit of passion I have for them, with them, that Jesus loves them in everything I do. And I'm gonna let them know, don't fear. Don't let worry take over because God loves you. And I wanna use those experiences in my life and I wanna encourage you today. Don't feel like you have to live up to some standard of someone else. You don't have to be your mother, your father, your pastor. We don't all have to be this, this certain person or this certain image. We just have to be who God called us to be, to live in his word, to believe his word, to share his word and his life and love with others. And God will do the work. It's not our responsibility to be the greatest. It's our responsibility to just give our all to Jesus and share. You know, there's a endless list of things that 
can cause us to have fear. Public speaking, I remember the first time I took public speaking in eighth grade. Even though I grew up around TV and I grew up with Fred Jordan and they'd make me go downstairs and, and be on the stage with 5,000 people at Thanksgiving and I'd have to say hello and stuff as one of the sons, you know, I had fear of getting before people and in front of people. And in eighth grade, when I had to give a speech, I stayed home that day. That's how scared I was. Many of you might feel that way about public speaking. I still get butterflies, sometimes in front of the camera talking to you. Most times when I'm speaking at a church or preaching on the streets at one of our events, there's always something. There's always a little nerve going on. But you know what? There's so much joy and peace and fulfillment that I have knowing that I get the blessed opportunity to share the love of Jesus and how much Jesus loves us all with those who are there to listen, that it takes that anxiety and that little bit of fear and that little bit of just nervousness and it melts it away. You know, losing your job, failure, rejection, disease, pain, not having enough money, death. There are so many things that can grip us. There's so many things that can cause fear. One of them I already shared, letting God down. But listen, I'm here to tell you, God isn't discouraged. He isn't let down by you. God knows everything we're gonna do today, tomorrow, and forever. He knows everything we've already done. God loves us and he just wants us to give our all to him so that he can use it for his purpose and his glory. To use our abilities and gifts and talents and our calling to glorify Him and to touch other people's lives. He just wants our hearts. You know, I would just encourage you, don't let fear cause you to miss the big picture, the calling and the purpose in your life because God's got a great plan for you. Don't allow fear to affect your physical, your emotional, your, your, your spiritual well-being and health because you don't have to because perfect love, God, can cast out all those fears. Also, relationships are hurt and broken and strained when we live in fear and when we live in discouragement. God made you, he made me. Not that life's gonna be perfect here, it's not. But with Jesus in our hearts, with God there every day, his Holy Spirit to guide us, direct us, comfort us, strengthen us. We, we as his children are more than conquerors. And one day when this world and this mess that we live in is all over, we will walk with Jesus and be with God in heaven for eternity if we just press on and keep our eyes on Jesus. I wanted to read from Hebrews 13, six in closing. Put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. Remember, we all have a calling. We all have a purpose and it's great. It's a great purpose because it comes from God. Don't allow fear and worry and discouragement take the place of your calling and your purpose. When you're afraid, ask God to help you to not fear when you Feel discouragement. Ask God to take that away so you don't live in discouragement. God is able, God is capable, and God wants to have you in the best place you can be, walking in his freedom every single day. Keep your eyes on Jesus. It's the safest place to be. Here at Fred Jordan Missions every day, we see all all types of people. I remember as a kid, my father Fred and my mom Willie teaching me a song about Jesus loves the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, we are all precious in God's sight. I still know that song, I taught it to my children, and that's exactly what we see here at Fred Jordan Mission every day. Red and yellow, black and white. Every single person that you could think of, from children all the way to seniors, are here on the streets living in LA. 
and they come to our doors to be loved on, to be shared with that Jesus loves you and Jesus saves. You know, we hand out water, we hand out drinks, we hand out snacks, we preach the gospel, we have hot meals, we do special events. But if you want to know who comes through our doors, it's all of us. There's no certain person, there's no certain look. But like I said in that song, red and yellow, black and white, we're all precious in God's sight. That's who we see here every day at Fred Jordan Mission. People from all around this country that end up on these streets can come through our door and we will serve them as we declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus to those in need. Today at Fred Jordan Mission and every day, we declare and demonstrate His love. We share with those who live just below us, 60 feet down on the streets, living in tents, living in cardboard boxes, living in doorways of people's businesses. There are men and women, young people and teens who live in fear and worry, anxiety and discouragement. But we, as Fred Jordan Mission, and with your partnership and your help, we get to share His love and how perfect love God cast out all fear and gives them a safe place to be. You'd be amazed how many people live on the streets of Skid Row who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And God hasn't yet opened a door, they haven't moved off the streets yet, but they're walking with Jesus and they live in peace and not fear. They live in a safe place, even though it's a very dangerous place, they live in a safe place in their hearts because they know God is with them always. And that's why we get to share His love every day with those who live in fear, so that God can deliver them. Will you continue to stand with us? We need your support, we need your love, we need your prayers. And if you can come volunteer, come down and be a part of being the hands and the feet of Jesus on Skid Row. God bless you. When the night comes and there's no one and you feel hopeless and abandoned, just take my hand and lift your eyes. Change is Join us in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today, 844-FJM-FOOD, or donating online, fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? The program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions.